I started playing guitar when I was five years old. I never managed the academic side of music, even until today, I don't know how to read or write music. By the time I was 12, I put together my first band. By the time I was 13, the Beatles came in the scene and that, it was over. I knew then that I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, to dedicate my life to, to, to this. Gustavo Santo Alasha is one of Latin America's most renowned musicians. He's formed part of many influential bands, and now in his 60s, this year he toured his native Argentina with a set list of some of his songs written decades ago. America's Now met the man known less as a frontman, but as the mastermind behind much of the Latin American soundtrack of the past decades, both in music and in movies. I started as a single songwriter with a band here in Argentina. Uh, but then when I moved to the United States, then I developed a whole new career as a producer and I became a very, very renowned Latin alternative uh, uh, producer. Santo Laja has overseen some of Latin America's most successful alternative rock and pop bands in recent years. He's won 15 Latin Grammys to date for his work with groups like Mexican bands Molotov and Café Tacuba. As well as Argentine rock bands Basuit and Divididos, he's produced and performed with stars like Julieta Venegas. He then moved into writing and producing scores for movies. He worked on Alejandro González Iñárritu's first movie, Amores Perros, and was soon in demand in Hollywood. One of the things that I always tried, uh, I think is very important and present in my music, is that I always wanted a sense of identity in what I do. I wanted to do something that somehow showcase who I am and where do I come from, which in, in a movie like, for example, The Motorcycle Diaries, because of the subject already of the movie, of course, there's more, uh, more easy to, to, to track the influences of Latin American folk music. But in a movie like Brokeback Mountain, you know, that is such a, a, a piece of Americana, I know that in that style and that type of guitar playing that I'm doing, you know, there's elements of Atahualpa Yupanqui, which is a guitar player from Argentina, very famous, you know, the use of silence and space. And that's perhaps something that no one in the States can, you know, notice, but I know that, that it's definitely uh, making, put a mark in me that, that translated in that, that music of that movie. Oscar goes to Gustavo Santolaya for Brokeback Mountain. In 2006, Santolaya won a first Academy Award for the soundtrack and original score to Brokeback Mountain. I want to dedicate this to my mother and my madre, uh, to my country, Argentina, and to all the Latinos. Para todos los Latinos, muchas gracias. Thank you. The very next year, he reunited with director Alejandro González Iñárritu on Babel, starring Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. And the Oscar goes to Gustavo Santaolalla for Babel. I certainly felt by, by the second time around, you know, the first time around you're going to always think, okay, you know, it was a, 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 a part of it that had to be, do with luck, you know, with, with a good luck. But, um, but uh, when, when it happened for a second time, you know, in, in a row, um, I had to admit that I felt that I was doing something that was connecting to a lot of people. And that's, that's, that's what it felt really, was very rewarding in that sense, you know, when you have the, the feeling that, gee, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm touching people with what I'm doing, you know. So it is, a, you know, it, it is the heaviest uh, of the awards, you know, I've been I've been blessed and I feel so grateful that you know I, I've got all these recognitions and multiple you know Grammys and Latin Grammys and Golden Globe and but BAFTAs, but the Oscars are definitely a, a, a different beast altogether. Santo Laja actively searches out different projects and formats. 
He teamed up for Leonardo DiCaprio's documentary on climate change. He wrote and performed the introduction theme to Netflix series Making a Murderer, and he worked on a musical that touches on the political violence of the 1970s in Argentina. I try to look for projects that I, that I can reverberate with, you know? And usually these are projects that somehow have strong content. I don't know why, but I'm drawn to those type of, of films, you know, being the Alejandro González Iñárritu movies or or, you know, writing and or putting together a, a, a dance show like Arrabal, which is, you know, tells a story about the desaparecidos. Uh, um, I think I'm drawn to this, this, uh, this, these big stories, you know. Um, I, I think, you know, that I, and I, I admire all kinds of entertainment, but I think I'm more drawn to, to things that have some type of uh, content, some type of a message uh, behind. As his career took off, Sandolaja progressively branched out to new formats. And more recently, he has delved into the world of video games. He's now also working on the second chapter of the hit PlayStation game, The Last of Us. Anything that, that represents a challenge, but, and that I feel that artistically is something that can take me to you know, a new place, a new platform, I'm always tempted to, uh, to try, to give it a, a shot. I was approached before to do other games, but what, n nothing really grabbed my attention like this game. I think the, the Last of Us is a very atypic, atypic game. It's not your typical video game. It's a, it's a video that has a very strong emotional content, which I guess what we were talking about before, I guess I'm looking always for stories that have that. And The Last of Us definitely has. I mean, I've heard that some people have even cried playing the game, you know? It's a different process because it's different than doing a music for a film or, or you know, or producing an album or you know, writing a song. But I think that at the end of the day, all of it, it is related to storytelling, to telling a story. So it's different. You, you use different techniques to do it, but basically, in my case, it's about music, sound, and telling a story. Now, Gustavo Santolaja is returning to the stage performing old songs in a tour called Desandando el Camino, in English, Unraveling the Path. I'm not a, a, an artist that have built his career uh, in nostalgia, you know what I mean? I, 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 I've done a lot of stuff in my life, but I, I, I don't have a tendency to look backwards. I usually, as a matter of fact, look forward and I'm always trying to experiment actually move out of my comfort zone and that's why I have done so many things but this you know I really haven't done never in my life I've never have fronted a, a, a group or so with my name I've always been you know a part of a band so now I feel that because of the age because of the maturity that I have in my voice and stuff, I feel that is the right moment to do so. I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity to do that now. Mm -hmm.